Hey guys, what is up? This is Matthew Davis Media once again. Welcome back to another movie review, AK After I Saw. This time it is going to be on Blink Twice. Actually, I'm going to do a double movie review, AK After I Saw, because I saw two movies on the same day, and I was kind of thinking about doing a separate uh, video, but, uh, uh, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to be reviewing Blink Twice first. Um, this movie involves a tech billionaire. Uh, named Slater King, played by Channing Tatum, who meets a cocktail waitress named Frida, played by Naomi Aki. At his fundraising gala, sparks fly. He invites her to join him and his friends on a dream vacation on his private island. It's paradise, and wild nights blend into sun-soaked days, and everyone's having a great time. No one wants to question the trip, but as strange things start to happen, Frida begins to question her reality. There is something wrong with the place. She'll have to uncover the truth if she wants to make it out of the party alive. Now, I uh, did watch the trailer a few times, uh, and um, I didn't really know a whole lot going in, but I do know that this is Zoe Kravitz, or Kravitz, uh, directorial debut, uh, mainly just because I read about it, but uh, yeah. And I can say it's a very strong start because this is a very bizarre film. This movie honestly has quite a bit of originality behind it. If any of you remember 2022's Don't Worry Darling, uh, that film was directed by Olivia Wilde, which I really wanted to enjoy, but I just found it as kind of a mixed bag. I feel like this is a much better version of this because I feel like it's actually kind of a bit more you know, uh, focused and explains the context of what certain aspects are going on a lot better as there are moments that um, feel like they're kind of misplaced, but that's kind of the purpose of it. And I felt, I felt like once the movie goes on, it tends to make a bit more sense as we know more about what's going on. Uh, because oftentimes it seems like things are going normal because oftentimes they're taking like these uh like this alcohol that uh, kind of makes them forget exactly what happened uh, during these nights i felt like it was done in kind of a very unique way it definitely had me thinking throughout a lot of the movie though a lot of times when it does come to these moments that happen once in a while that don't happen immediately with a specific scene it can tend to be a bit confusing for other people but as long as you're focused and want to know exactly what's going on when it comes to uh, the strange stuff that's going on, because I really wanted to know uh, the entire thing that was happening, especially since the performances are very strong. Naomi Aki is very strong as the main lead role, and Channing Tatum as the supposed bad guy is, is really good as well. And the final act two was very entertaining. And um, oftentimes there are some elements of humor that uh, have some awkward dialogue a little bit that uh, didn't always work, but the movie definitely is far more serious. Also, it does have some weird editing choices and some sound effects that are often kind of overused. Basically, the whole, like, you know, false jump scare aspect, which I know is supposed to be in there because it happens, like, multiple times during specific scenes, but it kind of... I don't know, it was kind of a bit annoying for me, but other than that, there really isn't a whole lot for me to complain about. Like, I can definitely see why some people would be split on the film, because it is pretty bizarre, and it might be a little bit hard to get into, because you're going to have to focus a lot about what's going on screen, but I felt like the concept alone, I thought, was handled very well. This is a strong directorial debut for Zoe Kravitz, and I can't wait to see what she does next. And honestly, if I were to recommend seeing a movie in the theater for an hour and 42 minutes, I recommend it being this and not Borderlands. <laughs> Alright, uh, now we're on to the main event, because I barely have anything positive to say about this next film, The Crow. The reimagining of the 1994 classic that was infamous for Brandon Lee's death. But hey, the movie was still great. I actually saw a re-release of that film uh, a couple months ago, you know, but yeah. Uh, just like with films like Madam Web, I knew this was coming out, but I had no idea when it, w it would be out. But yeah, it's out now. 
and Bill Skarsgård plays the lead role as Eric, also known as the Crow, as he meets a girl who he falls in love with and has a very strong-ish romantic relationship. Oh, the, the, the movie tries to make it strong, but of course something happens to both of them and there is a way for him to bring her back to life, but he has to do all these things, you know, he's, well... Yeah, I don't feel like a lot of people really cared that there was going to be a reimagining of this. Well, I mean, the, the Crow was a movie franchise, like there was more than one film, but none of them could top the original. And the original, I thought, was an absolute blast. I, I love the gothic tone of the film. It made it feel stylish. It made it feel more real. This film, while it tends to have the gothic tone, the magic really isn't there. I like Bill Skarsgård, but I'm sorry, he's certainly no Brandon Lee. I mean, the fact that it really tries to get you to connect with this relationship as unlike in uh, the original film where we don't really see it, um, it pretty much gets you right to the point. This, this film right here, the romance just dragged on way too long and basically the only way to make it feel more romantic is have a sex scene, have them make out once in a while, have, have them tell them that I love you m multiple times, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And it just went on for like 30 minutes, as it really didn't get into all the gothic uh, stuff, like him becoming the crow until like the last act. And uh, after his uh, girlfriend's death, um, pretty much that's when it gets more violent. And sure, you could say that's what you came for, but that's not entirely what The Crow was about. It was a very stylish film, and I could actually connect with some of the characters in the film. Like this one kid character, which there's no kid character in the movie to connect to at all. All I can really say about this film is that it just felt dull, which I knew just for the fact that reviews didn't start coming out until after I got got out of the movie that yeah, it, it was pretty much bound to fail to begin with. But hey, I will say this, during the last act there is a, there is a very violent uh, you know, scene at a stage play, which I thought was the most interesting part of the movie. The rest of the film I just felt like was an absolute mess. Like I don't really feel like in, what was the entire point. Like Bill Skarsgård tries his best, but the dialogue, it felt awkward, well, probably not as awkward as Madam Web, because the dialogue of that film, oh my god, just, it just felt very weak, and it just did not stick the landing when it came to the tone, because it just really wasn't there, and the direction, it just felt, I just, I was just watching the movie, you know, and I was all like, what's really the point of all of this, was anyone really asking for this, I mean, there are a lot of movies coming out this year, in terms of reboots that most people haven't really been asking for. Nobody really asked for a sequel to Twisters, but hey, that was actually a lot of fun. And uh, same with Alien Romulus, nobody really wanted another Alien film, but hey, that was a blast. But this is a reboot that I feel like had absolutely no purpose whatsoever. But hey, I will say, at least it's R-rated, which, I don't know, may make you want to check it out, but I don't think it's really worth it for that. There really wasn't a whole lot for me to enjoy about this film, and that's a shame because, you know, it just felt very bland and dull, which is something that The Crow, the first film, definitely did not feel dull in the slightest as, well, I mean, nobody really cared at this point, so I'm pretty sure you're not even going to see it anyway, but, you know, you don't have to listen to me, you could check it out, but it's not something I recommend. Other than that one scene at the play, yeah, it's a pretty forgettable film. I mean, hell, e even the opening sequence, I just knew that this was probably going to be a mess. And it was. Yeah, but anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Word out.